Have you ever photographed a bird against a bright sky, only to find that the sky looks fine, but the bird's almost a silhouette? In this video, I'll show you how you can use the tools in DxO Photo Lab to save your photo. Let's start with this example of an African fish eagle in a tree. If you want to follow along, I'll put the raw file on my website for you to download. You'll find a link in the YouTube video description, along with a link to a trial version of the software. The starting image is underexposed even though I added more than a stop of exposure when I shot it. It's probably also going to be a bit noisy in the shadows because it was taken using a Micro Four Thirds camera at ISO 800. We'll start our processing by adding some default corrections that I always apply to an image. First is the distortion correction which is in the geometry tab. You'll notice this is set to use the DxO lens modules which are already installed in my software. If you can't select this option, it's probably because you don't have the lens modules installed. To install the lens modules, go to the DxO modules menu. You can then select to download any of the missing modules. Any missing modules would appear in this dialog and you can click the download all button. If Photolab supports your camera and lens combination, you should now be able to use them in the Distort Correction panel and other tools that we'll be looking at. The next correction that we need to apply is in the Detail tab. This is where we can select the Denoising and Demosaicing option. There are a few options here, but we want to use the XD XD2S option. That has the best detail recovery from shadow areas for the type of RAW file that we're editing. If we zoom in now on the preview, you'll see a small improvement, but it doesn't accurately reflect how big an improvement the software will make. That's because the software hasn't yet converted the RAW file to an image. The way to accurately assess the result is by using the Loop Viewer tool, which we open from the toolbar. We can then set the level of magnification that we want to use. Let's set it to 400% for this example and move it over the eagle's head. You may still need to wait though for a few seconds while Photolab renders that area of the image to show a true preview. In this preview, we can see that the deep prime processing has done an excellent job. We can also see though there's a small amount of coloured fringe that needs to be fixed. But first, let's look at sharpening the image because it's a little bit soft. The way that we'll do this is by using the lens sharpness optimization setting. This is another of the adjustments that we'll use the lens modules mentioned earlier. All we need to do is click the option to turn it on, and then the eagle's head just snaps into focus. We'll then fix the chromatic aberration by turning on that panel. If you can still detect any colour fringing once that's been applied, you can use the other tools. But before you do, try turning on the lateral option. This often fixes any remaining problems without needing to make manual corrections. Let's close the loop now and return to viewing the full image. The final default correction that we want to apply is to remove any lens vignette. You'll find this in the light panel, usually at the bottom. As with the other corrections, we just need to turn it on and make sure it's set to use the lens module. That should remove any vignette caused by the lens around the edges and into the corners of the image. Now that we've applied the default corrections, we can begin to adjust the image to enhance the detail. We'll start by correcting the exposure using one of my favourite photo lab features, DxO Smart Lighting. This has two modes, and you can think of them being a bit like the metering system in your camera. The uniform option analyses the entire image, but the spot weighted option is like using spot metering. All we need to do is click the tool icon to activate the selection. We can then click and drag on the area of the image that we want the software to analyse. In this case, we'll use the eagle's dark feathers. The software then analyses the area and adjusts the exposure accordingly. It's also possible to use the tool to include multiple areas for analysis, so let's select the eagle's head as well. Now we just need to use the intensity slider to achieve a well exposed image. If we zoom in on the eagle and the tree at 100% magnification, we can see that it's already looking good. But suppose we now want to apply adjustments to enhance the tree and extract more detail in the eagle's feathers. 
This is where the new AI selection tools in Photolab 9 help. To use them, we first need to go to the Local Adjustments tab. We can then select the AI Mask option in the Local Adjustments panel. Click that and we see the tools appear along the bottom of the preview. These give us three ways to select parts of the image, so I'll use all three in this example just to demonstrate them. Let's start by using the Subject Selection list. This lists common subjects that we might want to select in an image. We'll use it to select the sky here. When I move my mouse pointer over the sky option in the list, the software analyzes the image and shows a mask of what it thinks is the sky. But now for a warning. Initially, you might not think that the mask is very accurate, but don't be fooled. What we are looking at is a rough preview and not the final selection. It's only when we click an option to select it and the mask is generated that we see just how accurate it is. In fact, if we magnify the image now to 100%, you can see the mask's accuracy around the bird's feathers. The AI masks in Photolab are by far the most accurate I've seen in any of the software that I use. The other thing to notice is that we now see a mask in the local adjustments panel with the selection method under it. Attached to each mask are adjustment controls that we can use to adjust the selected area. Let's zoom out and then use the exposure control to darken the sky slightly. Next, let's use another of the AI tools to select the dead tree. This time, let's use the Add Selection tool. First, I'll click on the Add icon and then move my mouse pointer over the tree. What's now happening is that Photolab is analysing the image to identify any objects. Then, when our mouse passes over one of these, it's highlighted. If we then click on a highlighted object, the selection is created and a new mask appears in the Local Adjustments panel. Something else that's worth mentioning here is that we can rename these masks by double-clicking them. Let's call this one Tree. We'll then increase the midtones to lighten the area slightly. And after that, add some contrast followed by micro contrast. This really does emphasise the texture in the dead tree, but it hasn't affected the sky or the eagle at all. Now, let's use the third AI selection tool to select the eagle. This one is the area selection, and as with the others, it's activated by clicking the icon. We can then position it near to the eagle before clicking and dragging. As I drag, you can see a rectangle appears. Photolab is analysing the area inside this rectangle to identify any objects. It then displays an overlay indicating what it's found. When the overlay looks like a reasonable selection of the eagle, I'll release the mouse button to create the mask. Now that the eagle is selected, let's magnify the image to 100%. We can then use the tools in the mask panel to extract more detail in this area. At the bottom of the tools list, we see the denoising and demosaicing adjustments. We'll start by increasing the force detail slider to extract additional detail from the raw file in this area. For the next adjustment, we need to know how the image will render, so we'll use the loop viewer again. This time we'll set it to 200% magnification and position it on the eagle's head. I'm then going to reduce the luminance noise reduction to zero. After that, we'll check the bird's feathers with the loop viewer just to make sure that there isn't a lot of noise showing up. We're doing this because the default level of noise reduction we applied earlier has already cleaned up the image. We don't need to add any more noise reduction in this area or we risk softening the fine details. Next, let's add a bit more lens softness optimization to the eagle. I should mention at this point that the lens I used for this shot was a 50 to 200 mm lens, and I also had a 2x teleconverter on it. That's converted the focal length to 400 mm, and because it was a micro four thirds camera, that's equivalent to 800 mm. Given I shot this image handheld in low light, it's quite remarkable what Photolab has been able to produce from it. Let's close the loop viewer now, and at 100% magnification, the eagle looks fantastic. I'll just add a bit of contrast and micro contrast to make the details really pop. Zooming out, the detail of the eagle and the branch now stands out nicely against the background sky. Finally, 
we'll go back to the Light tab and refine the Smart Lighting adjustment. The image now looks excellent and is packed with high quality detail. Look at how it compares to the starting image. But there is something we haven't covered in our editing, and that's developing the colours. To understand more about achieving better colours in Photolab, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you found the video useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon in the next video.